Well, with just a few days to go until Independence Day on the 4th of July, the coronavirus health crisis is winding down just as the economic crisis begins to set in. As we heard earlier, Boris Johnson reiterated his commitment not to pursue an austerity programme to balance the UK's enormous spending during the lockdown. Instead, the government looks likely to continue borrowing vast sums of money. John Cordwell, the business leader, philanthropist and founder of Phones for You, joins me now to explain where he thinks this government can invest this money in order to protect jobs and get the economy back on track. So, John Cordwell, when people freak out about this and say, oh, my goodness, we're in this terrible economic crisis. We need to need to go back to austerity. We need to stop spending money. You actually say, hang on a minute. Actually, this is the time to borrow. Why? Yes, absolutely. You know, and it's the first time in my entire life that I've felt that the government should borrow money. And the reason is because the circumstances are extraordinary, as we know. There's going to be devastating loss of jobs of maybe three to four million people. Uh, there's going to be countless uh, young entrepreneurial businesses that are put out of business. And all of this needs saving as much as possible. Now, my rescue plan is all about reflating the economy and investing wisely. Any business invests wisely. Why shouldn't a country invest wisely? Well, historically, it was difficult to do for a number of reasons. One is that governments often don't invest wisely, and that needs to change. But the other reasons are very, very compelling. One is that uh, government debt used to have a very high interest charge on it and would be crippling to the government's uh, budget, budget every, every year as they paid the huge cost of servicing that debt. The second was there was always a danger of a run on the pound and the pound being devalued as a consequence. And the third was that, uh, that very easily inflation could get out of control. All of those three factors are now irrelevant. We've got more t tendency for deflation than inflation. We even have negative rate interest rates in some parts of the country. And in addition to which, the uh, a combination of the cost of borrowing, the low inflation and the low run in the pound makes it a very compelling case to be able to borrow the money and invest. Now, that only works if we invest it incredibly shrewdly and incredibly wisely. And I've listed the main areas that I would want to see uh, invested in. Number one, and probably first and foremost, is an investment in renewable energy. I'd love to see the government create a renewable energy city, mm. which would be a combination of two aspects. It would be a city in itself that ran entirely on renewable energy, but the city would be there to house the workers in the renewable energy industry. And I would do everything in my power to attract all the best talent, both in terms of scientists and in terms of business talent, to come to this city and have a just a huge renewable energy uh, development. The benefits of this, of course, would be short, medium and long term jobs. But if we did it really, really well, there is no reason whatsoever why we couldn't be at the forefront of the world renewable energy business. What and other areas do you think we should invest in? Uh, the other areas are absolutely, um, well, other areas of infrastructure, so such, such as fiber optic, um, housing, hospitals, uh, roads, rail, anything that makes the UK more efficient. Uh, apprenticeship schemes are vital. For too long now, we've been persuading and forcing young people to university, regardless of how academically inclined they are. That was a waste of talent. You know, everybody that wants to go to university should have that opportunity and, and should be encouraged to do so. But there's a lot of young people that are then left either with a very poor quality de degree or if they don't go to university with a very poor uh, future. And those kids need encouraging to go into apprenticeship schemes that would be a five year long apprenticeship scheme mm. would combine intellectual education with on-the-job skills and social training 
and various modules that would grow them as an individual, like, for instance, the, uh, the job that I was in where I was sent to uh, a local hospital to work with uh, mentally ill patients. Uh, and that widens the scope and breadth and depth of, a, of an individual so that at 21 years old, when they come out of that apprenticeship, they've got a vast, vast array of skills and of social understanding. Um, and the, the fourth and final piece yeah. would be to invest very, very heavily in bringing e businesses to the UK to set up in the UK by all sorts of grants. Now, I wouldn't like to say, say at this moment in time what sort of grants they should be. That is for the government to decide what the most attractive way of encouraging new businesses in the UK to set up their foundations and set up their manufacturing plants and so to create jobs. Now, if we do all those four things, and there may be other, other uh, promotional aspects that we ought to do as well, but if we do all of those four things and we do them very aggressively and very, very committedly, this, this crisis of jobs and business as a consequence purely purely and simply of this uh, this this uh, virus will be ameliorated and minimized to the least possible uh, negative consequence if we don't do this mm. we will carry on borrowing money to pay for the social costs of unemployment and we'll suffer all the losses of revenue that go along with uh, high unemployment and the government will carry on and end up having to borrow tens of billions of pounds per year every year until they find a way of stimulating the economy so it is really yeah. a no, i i think it's really sensible your plan i just wonder john how much of the onus is on us as consumers as well here because you know there's a lot of sneering at the moment about people that might be going out to shops or are you going to be at a restaurant on Super Saturday and is that the right thing? Whereas I actually feel like it's our civic duty to go out and try and get the economy started again. Yeah, and I can absolutely agree with that point to, a, to an extent. But of course, people are still very frightened of coronavirus. And sort of rightly so to an extent, because we haven't absolutely stamped it out yet. But I think young, fit and healthy people with certain level of precaution should be going out, should be spending money and should be helping to stimulate the environment within their capability. And I think they will do that. But, the, you know, the economy, I think, is going to be divided into two sets of people. There's those that are frightened to death of coronavirus and frightened of the economic consequences, and they probably will be entrenched. And then there's the other set of people that realize that life has to go on. They're less frightened about the virus and they realize that we have to get back to life as normal in order for the economy to survive. Indeed. John Caldwell, business leader, philanthropist, founder of Phones for Youth.